In 2018, with the first pick of the draft, the Philadelphia 76ers selected Markel Fultz from the University of Washington, which led to the Celtics using the third overall pick, drafting Jason Tatum from Duke University. But can you imagine if we could go back in time and the Sixers would take Tatum number one overall? What a dynasty the Sixers could be. Well, today we are going back in time and helping the 76ers fix their franchise. Because MB just deserves better, man. Ben Simmons, you gotta shoot that shot. And real quick, like over 90% of you guys that are watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. And we're like really close to 6K, so make sure you hit that sub button. And also drop a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you guys for all the support recently. Victor one, blah, blah, blah. Which brought us to the 2017-2018 season, the beginning of a dynasty. Tatum would be drafted by the 76ers while Markel Fultz would head to Boston. The 76ers record last season was 28 and 54 so they had some big improvements to get to and with the core of Embiid, Ben Simmons when he could actually you know kind of hoop and Jason Tatum this team had scary potential to be a great team in the future. Tatum had a pretty decent rookie season putting up 15.8 points per game but the rookie of the year ended up going to Donovan Mitchell who averaged 21.4 points per game out in Utah. The Sixers though did make the playoffs thanks to Embiid's great season averaging 24.6 points per game and 11.4 boards and the Sixers were able to get their first playoff series win with this group knocking out the Hawks in only five games but then came next series where they matched up against the Milwaukee Bucks and this team was just not ready for Giannis and the Bucks yet as they would get sent home in only five games Tatum would break over 20 points per game his second year in the league helping give this team a big boost on offense but just like the Sixers in real life this team choked in the playoffs losing in the first round to the Detroit Pistons the 1920 season is where the Sixers really seemed to turn it up the Sixers won the most games in the East getting the one seed in the Eastern Conference Embiid would be in the MVP race this season but he fell short as the MVP won out West to Steph Curry. And falling short would be the theme of this season as the Sixers would lose in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Nets. And the Sixers fans were starting to lose patience, feeling this team has not lived up to the expectations yet. But Joel and Tatum told them to trust the process. Over the offseason, Embiid was in the gym working hard to get that MVP and the city a ring. Tatum was also in the gym working hard over the offseason, but Mr. Simmons was not. I mean, I have no clue what this dude was doing, but you could tell he didn't shoot a ball all offseason by the way he looked in the first team practice of the 2020-21 season. The Sixers looked really good though this season. Tatum seemed to hit a new level score the ball averaging 25.4 points per game this year. Embiid also seemed to be locked in breaking 30 points per game and 10 rebounds this season and also taking home his first MVP award. The Sixers would get through the first two rounds of the playoffs easy beating the Raptors in four games and then the Heat in five games which brought us to a rematch between the Sixers and the Nets who just knocked out the Sixers last year. The Nets also have James Harden now and the Nets team is completely healthy so this series was going to be a battle and these teams elite scoring abilities would lead us to a game seven in the final minutes to decide the series winner. All right this is game seven the Nets are down three they need a basket here if they want to stay in this game. Harden to Claxton. Claxton had a shot. Now he's gonna. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Harden getting guarded by Embiid. Harden trying to step. Bro, this is. I don't even know what's going on, bro. Weird sequence. But Al Horford throwing down the dunk, and I think that's gonna be the game. And the Nets definitely didn't lose because of Kevin Durant. He just had 50 points and 12 boards on him. In the finals, the 76ers would match up against the Warriors, and obviously, anytime you got Steph in the finals, it's gonna be a good series. The Sixers though did have an opportunity to close this one in Game Six. All right, tie game. They're giving the ball to Tatum for the last shot. Tatum pulling up for three and he misses we're going to overtime and let's play his this oh my god that almost went in sixers down one right now eight seconds left they got to get the ball to tatum or mb not tobias harris tatum getting guarded by russell i'm pretty sure tatum's gonna take the shot tatum fade away jump shot he hits it and philly wins their first ring just like that the half court shot missed by steph curry or full court shot but yeah jason tatum just knocked down he missed the uh game winner in the fourth quarter but then in overtime he hits the game winner down two points and 2k is still broken they still have like a player from the opposite team celebrate and what a game from Steph as well 42 points but if we go over to the Sixers look at Jason Tatum 53 points 17 boards this dude shot 22 three-pointers he made 11 of them I mean what a crazy game from Tatum and then you got Embiid with 31 12 3 2 and 2 a really good game as well but I mean 53 and 17 that may be one of the best if not the best finals performance ever Jason Tatum just had and the 21 22 season would be insane as the defending champs would add James Harden at the deadline and say goodbye to Ben Simmons the Eastern Conference Finals would be the Nets versus Philly once again, and the Sixers looked like they won the Harden trade as they took a 3-1 series lead. And in Game 5, Tatum had a 47-point game to close out the series and advance to back-to-back -to -back finals. In the finals, the Sixers would match up against the Grizzlies, and John Morant would have some highlight plays throughout the series, throwing down some crazy dunks, but the Sixers were just better and won it in five games. The next season, the Sixers made it right back to the playoffs looking to go for the three-peat, which led us to the Eastern Conference Finals of the Sixers versus the Bucks. And the Sixers found themselves down 2-1 in the series, and the Sixers did not respond well in Game 
game four either as the Bucks would win taking a 3-1 lead. But the Sixers were not done yet. They would come back and take game five and also game six in Milwaukee forcing a game seven. And game seven was all 76ers as they would be up 23 at halftime and win the game in a blowout fashion and take the series as Giannis would blow a 3-1 lead. And this year's finals would be the 76ers versus the Nuggets. And whoever was going to win the big man battle of Jokic versus Embiid was going to control this series. And Embiid won the battle almost too easily. He averaged 41.3 points per game throughout the finals, taking home another ring in only five games as the Sixers team looked basically unstoppable, which brought us to a new era in Philly, the post Harden era. But now that James Harden left, it gave Tyrese Maxey a chance to shine and show what he could do. But it wasn't good for the Sixers where Harden went as he formed another super team in the NBA with the Clippers. But even with losing Harden, this team still played great during the regular season as they got the one seed again in the East. And Joel Embiid would take home his second MVP trophy, averaging 33.4 points per game and 12.6 boards. The East was going to be tough this year for the Sixers, especially with the Bucks' addition of Damian Lillard. Three seconds, game pulls for the win! The Bucks got the five seed though, so the Sixers would see them in the second round, and the Bucks were actually up on the Sixers three to two going into Game Six, and the Bucks did have a chance to end it. All right, this is Game Six. There's three seconds left in regulation. Giannis just walking the ball up the court, shoots a half court shot, and he's gonna miss. We're going to overtime. All right, and the Sixers just won by seven points in overtime. It was really never close. Tatum with a 35 point game. Tobias Harris dropped 30. All right, Game Seven against the Bucks in the second round. These Sixers do win, so they're moving on to the Eastern Conference Finals now, and they're gonna be playing the New York Knicks. And in the Eastern Conference finals Jalen Brunson was on a Lynn Sanity run as he was torching the Sixers. The Knicks took game one in Philly thanks to Brunson dropping 51. The series was 1-1 going back to New York and Brunson would have a 43 point game taking a W for the Knicks and then another 40 point game taking a 3-1 lead on the Sixers. And sadly the Sixers run would end here. They would get a game in Philly but lose game six in New York. Over the offseason Tatum was shocked to leave. For some reason he would leave the 76ers to join the Toronto Raptors and I don't know why he did it. Maybe Drake recruited him or maybe he just wanted to prove he could win a ring on his own. I don't know. Well Tatum did have a great year though with the Raptors and finished second in MVP voting. But the MVP went to Luka and it was mainly because this dude's literally just a walking triple double. The 76ers had a good season though as the new duo of Embiid and Maxi really seemed to start shining. And the Raptors would beat the Pacers in the second round and the Sixers would beat the Cavs in the second round, leading to a Raptors versus Sixers Eastern Conference Finals. And this series was definitely personal and Philly let Tatum know they did not mess with him anymore from the opening tip of game one. This series was a really good series. There was a lot of close games and a lot of big performances, which eventually led us to a game Game seven in Toronto. The final minute of game seven. You can't ask for a better ending than this. Tatum versus old team. Down one in Toronto. Game seven. Driving on Roco. He's gonna miss the layup. Beat has Bruce Brown on him. They should probably get it to him. Beat or Maxi's gonna abuse Potal. And Maxi with the spins. Step back. Potal Tatum. Tatum wide open for three. He's gonna shoot it and knock it down. Tatum takes a two point lead on the Sixers. What a shot. See if they're gonna hold it or go for the shot. It looks like they're gonna go for a shot. Maxi's getting clamped up by Bruce Brown out of all people. No, he's not. Pulling up mid range. Gonna miss, bro. Why did he not just take the layup? He had a wide open layup, and that's most likely the game. I wasn't even looking. Tatum missed a free throw. So Tatum missed one of the free throws. So they're still in the game. 107, 104. Three pointer can send it to overtime right here. Gary Harris with the ball. Deep three and he's gonna miss. So the Raptors are going to the finals to play the Utah Jazz. Yes, you heard me right, the Utah Jazz. I have no clue how they came out of the West. All right, and game seven is a blowout, but it's a blowout the other way. The Raptors handle business, and they are going to be advancing. And the finals is an easy one for Tatum and the Raps. They would sweep the Jazz 4-0, and Tatum would prove he could win a ring on his own and bring the city of Toronto another ring. Next season, the 76ers would match up against the Raps again in the Eastern Conference Finals. And here's what happened. In the finals, they played the Thunder, who have been patiently waiting their turn to come up in the league. And Josh Giddy was still a free man and not in jail as well. I, I don't know. I mean, are we just gonna we just gonna forget about this? I guess I, I don't know. But this was a great series that came down to a very close finish once again, thanks to SGA's 50 plus point game seven. The Raptors are down six points right now with one minute left, so it's gonna be a tough comeback. Tatum fade away jump shot, gonna knock it down. That will help. Tatum with a 33 point game. He didn't really get going until the second half. Shea with the ball, who's played a great game with a chance to close it out. Throws a dot to dort in the corner dort's gonna miss though and i don't know who this guy is some random named pool dribbling up the court i don't he thought he was gonna get the ball stolen but tatum launching a three tatum knocks it down it's a one point game 26 seconds left they're gonna have to file the one guy they have to file is shay i was hoping they'd file giddy all right tatum with the ball 19 seconds uh they gotta get i mean they gotta get a quick shot if they're gonna shoot a two it looks like they're gonna try and get a three though tatum had a shot and just doesn't pull it brown's gonna shoot it now that's not good oh my god brown knocking it down bro what it just came back from six with like under a minute left game seven where legends are made six seconds left sj with the ball getting guarded by bruce 
Brown. Shea had a lane to the hoop, pulls up though and knocks it down. What a clutch shot. I mean, Shea literally had a layup and just wanted to shoot a step back mid range. I guess it might look better for his like Instagram or something. I don't know. Hey, but the game's not over. Tatum's hit many clutch shots throughout this video. See if he has one more in him. He's going to shoot a three from like half. Court Tatum's gonna miss and SGA puts the dagger in it with a mid-range jump shot with two seconds left and the Thunder win a ring. Shea just played an amazing game. He had like 50 plus points. And the next three seasons were pretty uneventful for the Raptors not making it back to the finals in any of the three seasons. But in the 29-30 season, the Raptors would make it back to the finals, but their appearance would be short-lived, getting sent home 4-1 to one by no other than Victor Wambada.